Cut out the part when I said I was HIV positive. What's up, Epic Gamers? Uh, we got a cool content, some cool content for you guys. Uh, we got a podcast going on. Uh, uh, I, let's start off. I, I got a bone to pick with you, Caleb. Let's start off right here. You have a bone to pick uh, with me? I got a bone to pick with you, bro. Okay. I feel like when it, when it started with Smash, when you were a wee lad, and it started with Smash, right? You know, mm. I felt like I kind of had to coach you through there. And it was really satisfying watching you kind of like outgrow me as like a Smash player, right? But then when it comes to content creation, I feel like I got to coach you all over again, bro. Like, uh, <laughs> good example. I feel like it's so much content that you just leave on the table. You've had some really hype matches, that fatality match, right? You should have done a breakdown on that, dude. Like, so uh, I, I'll give you my rationale on that. At the time, I was not comfortable posting losses, um, at least with the fatality match in particular. That is like still my highest view match on YouTube, right? For Smash content. Um, probably the highest thing that has my name attached to it just because of fatality is such a huge name in that space. That being yeah. said, I think that moment has passed. I think it would be unfair and not necessarily super productive of me to analyze a match from like three years ago because the game has advanced so much since then. Fatality is by far not the best Falcon out now. I think he has to retire from the game altogether. Shout out to that wonderful guy, Steve. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, it'd be interesting going back, but I'm not sure if that's really beneficial or not. I don't think there's any harm in doing it, though. The Fatality Peanut as well, that match. Uh, how long ago was that? Peanut? Ooh, I don't know. Peanut was two or three years ago. It, it it was either before COVID or after COVID. I can't remember which one really. I want to say. I feel like that applies to everything. I think everything was probably either before or after COVID. All right. Well, <laughs> literally, yes, <laughs> everything was before or after COVID. But it, it was definitely a year before or a year after, like either directly prior to the world shutting down or directly afterwards. And the All determination right. <laughs> on whether before or after would make. It more or less applicable because I feel like for ultimate, there are like two stages of the game, right? There's yeah. the pre COVID era. Um, a lot of people kind of recognize that by like MK Leo's dominance and Joker kind of still be considered the number one character. Uh, you saw the scene kind of have like this real potential to be one of the largest esports, uh, especially in terms of the fighting game community because you saw these organizations like Panda Global. And a couple other ones, I'm blanking on names right now. Uh, I want to say VG Bootcamp or something along those lines um, in Maryland. And then you have the after COVID period where scandals got exposed. A lot of top players just completely lead the community. And um, obviously, you know, the DLCs come out. The Kazias, the Steves, <laughs> the Pyramithras, the quote unquote game ruining characters. And it, uh -oh. the game been an interesting quote state since then. Yeah, quote unquote. Like, I don't think they're that bad. Oh, you don't think they're that bad, including Steve Min Min. You, you don't think they're that bad? Min Min got nerfed. Uh, shout out to Japan, <laughs> one of the only like real DLC nerfs that we saw because uh, they were not really rock on that character. Steve is annoying, but Steve is not winning every tournament. Um, and and I, you know, I. Like you were mentioning earlier, I came from Smash 4, right? That was my first Smash game that I got into competitively because I was playing it with you. First time I played that game, you know, saw Builder Chop a Tree Down. Great game. Uh, you, by the end of Smash 4, you know what the two characters were that were, like, dominating every tournament? And it wasn't, like, an exception. It was Bayo and Cloud. And it, it's even not that. So, so I see that type of dominance. I'm never going to be too mad about Steve. Is Steve not that? I don't know. I'm not keeping up with Smash as much as you are, obviously. But I think Steve is definitely, like, from what I can gather, he's definitely, like, number one. Like, so, polarizing. Yeah, definitely polarizing, right? And the number one player in the world, Akola, uh kid from Japan, does play Steve. And admittedly, in Japan, he's winning a lot of tournaments. The issue is that it really is just him in Japan. Uh, not saying that these other seeds aren't like as good or, well, yeah, I am saying they're not as good, but 
they're, they're just don't have the same level of like dominance, uh, at least in the States or really at any tournament. Okola is not at where I just expect Steve to take a bracket. I, I don't think that expectation is there. I think Sonic is much more of a threat to take like most brackets than a Steve would be. Cause this way, you know, you gotta know that you gotta prepare for that character. It's scary. So what you put Steve in your top one for Smash? Do you think he's the best character? Mm. Oh, I don't think I, I mean, because I don't I don't know if I agree with that. Like, I think he's top <laughs> three for sure. I, I don't think he's I don't know if I say he's top one because he has polarizing matchups. Um, like Cloud, what? Yeah. Like who? Like Cloud. Uh, I've heard ZSS isn't great. Uh, generally, big swords, big fast characters. And honestly, you can get outplayed as Steve. I don't want to say easily, but it's definitely doable. So uh, I can't. Uh, <laughs> this might be my bias because, you know, Steve was the character I wanted most in the game. I don't play him, but he was the one that I really wanted to see in this game. Yeah, he's, he's he's cool. He's very strong. He's not the best. I don't know if I agree. Again, I'm not paying as close attention to like tournament results, but like, can't Steve like negate like knockback on getting hit? Uh, he totally invalidates some characters in some matchups. He invalidates like Sheik, right? He puts down a block. He puts down two blocks. She can't do anything about it. She just has to like watch him do it. He invalidates a large part of the cast. He doesn't play by the same rules. He can block off the ledge. Uh, like this doesn't seem like a fair character to me in the first place. Like I don't know how you could not have him top one. I think that the fact that there aren't a lot of people playing him is a testament to like how high the skill ceiling is. But I think that like once you do reach a certain point, that it is like he's just an unfair character. If Smash Ultimate is still being played in another five years, I guarantee you like the the top strategy offline is going to be like Steve hit stun cancel or whatever. Like it's he's not a fair character off rip. So I remember the hits on canceling being a big factor on why he was like originally banned um a few years ago. One thing I would say, Steve right now is the highest played character in the game. Like in terms of the co- tournament uh competitive, he's the character oh. game picked most often. So for me, the fact that he is the most common character, but he isn't winning every single tournament. Um, there have been tournaments without like season top eight oh, as no. well, like majors. No, and that's, no, that's what's shocking to no. me, right? Cause you see all these strengths on the character, but he's not making it to that upper echelon of bracket. And you gotta wonder yeah. why, what's going on? Why is he not like dominating in the same way like a yeah. Meta Knight would be in Brawl or Bale was in Smash 4? And I don't think the character has the same level of strength. I, I truly yeah. don't. No. No, nah, no. Nah. I, I mean, I see there's definitely a point there. Like, if there is, like, a busted character, Leroy, when he came out, there were, like, seven of him in top eight at, like, Tekken and Evo, right? right. Like, I, I I get that, like, oh, you would expect to see a lot of a high-tier represented or a top-tier represented in, like, top level. But just because a character is not, like, winning majors, or just because a character is not, like, the character that wins the tournaments does not mean they are top-tier. If you look at like Guilty Gear Strive, for instance, Ramothal has consistently been a top three, top five character, and she has never won a major. But she is consistently one of the best characters in the game. And I think it comes down to people. I think it comes down to two things. It's one is that people are really used to the matchup, so you can't rely on like gimmicks to beat people as that character because Absolutely. everyone's already seen it, right? And then number two, when it comes to Steve's case, I feel like. While he is, like I said, like invalidating a lot of matchups so he can get you decently far at like the lower end. When it comes to higher end stuff, you really have to like, you know, reach into your bag to like he's he's not a simple character at top level play. Mid level play, high level play, I'll say he's brain dead. Top level play, if we're talking about like top eight at majors, you really have to be approaching that skill ceiling in order to compete, I think. Because he's he's not as simple as just like, oh, they're behind me, I'll do a uh, back air, they're in front of me, I'll do forward air. No, he's a more complicated character than that. So I feel like a lot of people switch to Steve because he gives them easy wins, but they're not prepared for like top level competition because they don't like study the matchups. Okay, I can 100% agree with that. What I will say, um, in terms of like Steve's place on a tier list, we can have Steve a top one. I personally think it's Sonic, but I can see the argument for Steve. I don't think him being a top one makes him like, you know, this crazy broken character though. 
right? I feel like this game is balanced well enough that regardless oh. of if the character is relatively polarizing for, I don't say about half the cast, because I don't think Steve just, like, just destroys every single character, right? I definitely think his game plan is solid in pretty much every matchup, and he has ways to win. But I would say he's almost on that same echelon as a lot of the other top tiers in this game. I.e. Sonic, um, Pikachu, uh, even Joker to a degree, right? Where, yeah, you know, you can always win. There's always opportunities to um, be able to take games if you have some type of mechanic that does make it more polarized in your favor, but every character has this. It's not just Steve. Mo- the way I think of Ultimate nowadays, it's a game of cheesers. Every single character, um, after a certain like echelon, has some mechanic that is borderline unfair. Uh, if I'm getting killed by like 40% by a Cinewars IB, it doesn't matter if you're playing Steve. I'm still going to be salty. I'm not going to lie to you. That's not right. But everybody does it. So uh, it, it makes it hard for me to have like, this mindset where it's like, oh, well, so you stop one, he's broken. Guess the game's dead. People like, uh, I don't know. That's, that's my feelings on it. Do you think Smash Ultimate is dead? I don't think so. Be real. Be I, real. Be real. I don't. Um, I think that American players like to complain. <laughs> I, I, I will say that. <laughs> I think we have a lot of complaints here in the U.S., but internationally, I don't think this game's dead at all. You have people in Japan who play this game on a weekly basis for free. No prize pools, nothing. But going out to their locals, playing competitively for nothing because they love the game so much. And I feel if people enjoyed their characters more, uh, really had a dedication to wanting to see improvements, develop tech skill, really be like the character specialists that they could be or uh, just push themselves to be the best player they can be, that, that there'd be more enthusiasm in the States as well. That's interesting that you feel like that. Uh, I don't, I think, I don't know if it's necessarily by, like complainers. I feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of issues with Smash Ultimate, I think, personally. Um, Give me the my issues. biggest one, <laughs> you mentioned that like if people enjoyed their characters more, and I think that's kind of like my biggest issue is that I think that Smash Ultimate, despite having a large roster and despite having like a cool roster i think it has a bad roster and by that i mean that i think too many characters play too similar a game or like you said earlier too many characters relies on rely on unfair mechanics and i feel like it's not interesting there isn't like a fun matchup like we've got there are what 80 something 83 characters in smash ultimate right every character might have like two or three four or five matchups you think are like fun and then everything else you're like i hate this matchup i hate this matchup i hate this matchup it doesn't feel cool i feel like it doesn't have a lot of room for expression personally i think the roster is like one of the the driest rosters in the fighting game i played personally now just for contest can you please enlighten uh enlighten the audience on what character you play in ultimate <laughs> I play mostly Brawler. I've been branching out into Sheik a little bit. Uh, I used to play Joker. Okay. Uh, I think those are the main ones. That's fair. Uh, Brawler is interesting because I would imagine like you'd have a lot more matchups where it is very engaging. I.e., like characters that actively approaching you. Um, you have great frame data, very fast character, very relatively strong character, amazing kill confirms. Uh, I wonder. So you said there are about five matchups that you feel are like enjoyable for you to play. Where are the five? Uh, uh, putting me on the spot, I think. I think that for Brawler, he has more fun versus heavier characters generally um, for obvious reasons. So as much as I hate Rob, I think he's a pretty cool matchup for Brawler. Uh, Hold on. I think there's a wasp in my apartment. Not a wasp. <laughs> what is this thing? This thing is huge. What is that? Is that actually a wasp? I'm just terrified. I'm scared of my life over here. We'll be right back after these sponsored messages. A few moments later. All right, back to regularly scheduled programming. Ah! Admittedly, I am not sure where we left off. 
Um, oh, oh, we were talking about the, the, the fun matchups for Brawler. Yeah, what are some fun uh, matchups for Brawler? Yeah, I think fun matchups would include Rob. Um, I don't think he has too many issues with other aggressive characters. Fox, I think, is a pretty interesting matchup for him. Uh, uh, I'm really struggling to think of anybody else <laughs> because everyone else, I don't feel like I'm going to play an interesting neutral game or I'm going to do all these sick combos. I just think of all the unfair ways they can get out of disadvantage or I think about all the ways that they're going to, all the hitboxes they'll abuse in neutral that I don't have counterplay for and I just have to wait for them to like whip or something. Okay. Uh, so I agree with you, right? Like I would are either the majority of Smash Ultimate games are like that where you have to deal with like either huge hitboxes or crazy options you got disadvantage or fast frame data, something along those lines. But I, I think that's the experience you sign up with Ultimate, right? And even to a degree with your character, because I've definitely fought some brawling before. Uh you you you're kind of in that same boat. I hate to say it, but you're right there. All right, um, Thrupper is a huge thing. Up air ladders that kill at like 60, 70%. Um, this is when you get the right hit. Multiple kill converts out of up air or falling up air into neutral special. Uh, relatively fast aerials that kill. Uh, uh, Fox Bear, Whoa. Mario Nair. Uh, the question marks, man. I'm, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop a hot take. I'm going to drop a hot take. Then I'm going to ask you for a hot take on Smash. I'm going to drop a hot take. I think Brawler is one of the most overrated characters in Smash Ultimate. Uh, I do not think... I think he's good, and I think he's better than people gave him credit for for the entirety of, like, Smash Ultimate until recent. But now I think people are way overvaluing him. He doesn't have anything that's unfair. If you look at everybody in Smash Ultimate who's good, they're good because they have, like, two or three unfair things. Brawler is possibly one of the most fair characters in the game. If you get hit by a Thrupper, if you get hit by a Falling Up Air, you deserve that. Like, he can't cheat you. Oh. The cheesiest thing he has is suplex, and it doesn't even kill. We got different definitions on cheat, because um, that character <laughs> feels like Mario with uh, Loki, a little bit of uh, extended hit boxes. He's a little bit longer than Mario. I uh, I'm not sure I, how much I, I agree with that take. I don't, I don't know. Is he on, like, what, forward smash? Uh, just like his aerials in general, uh, forward air. Maybe not back air, but... Uh, I mean, I, that might be a little bit of a cap. That might be a little cap. I, I'll go ahead and retract that. I'm thinking like yeah, up barrel Mario. <laughs> a little bit bigger. C- customizable Mario. How about that? Uh, I'll go ahead and throw that out there. He's Mario with some customizable. Custom. Yeah, customizable. customizable but a lot, you have to also take into consideration that a lot of his moves, a lot of his moves are really good, but a lot of his moves are really cap. Uh, he doesn't have too much flexibility when it comes to down B. Uh, the counter is... the worst special in the game agreed uh and then head on assault is okay sometimes but considering that you're giving up flip kick to get it it's not worth it right um when it comes to neutral special it's shot put and uh it's shot put and mock punch because the little falcon punch thing isn't even good on falcon right so it's just for style points uh side b onslaught is functional I guess uh, it kills, <laughs> but I wouldn't say it's a good move. Super slow, uh, super punishable on block, but like forward smashes, up smashes, like you can really punish it on block. Uh, leaves you in free fall, if I'm not mistaken, right? Like it's not, a, that's not a great move. Uh, mm. Like you, you, it's customizable, but only so much. Definitely niche, agreed there. Um, I guess in what I swiftly am thinking of is your up bees. I all three are fairly functional. Um, you get access to either great out of shield options and consistent damage with the, um, I forget the name of it. It's the one that's axe kick goes up axe and down. Kick, yeah, flying axe, yeah. Um, then you have Thrupper, which for obvious reasons can be a very broken tool. Um, then the last one is. It's like head scissor. Helicopter kick. Helicopter kick. I'm about to say head scissor assault. I really <laughs> did not have the name for that. What is a head scissor? <laughs> uh, <it was, laughs> I'm thinking pro wrestling, okay? I was literally just fans watching SmackDown, so uh, it's still kind of on my mind. Uh, and then that one, right? Ridiculously early kills towards the blast zone. So I, I guess when you say that your character is very honest, 
I kind of take that as surgery. I'm like, is killing at 70 honest? I, I don't know if it is. Off of relatively safe, not, I'm not going to say completely safe, but relatively safe and standard neutral interactions. Hitting up here is not like out of the norm for me brawler or getting a down throw because you're up be converted to down throw um i I don't know about honesty i I, and again i i'd say this in the context that every single character has something like this right this is the foundation smash ultimate if your character isn't doing something relatively dishonest then you're not playing a good character right like (laughs) i agree which is why i think that brawler is overrated because like you could say that down throw up air is dishonest you could say that but compared to what everyone else is doing let's be real let's be real and then when you also consider the 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 percent window because the windows for his confirms are surprisingly tight like even down throw up b right Mm -hmm. uh like what percentages is that going to work if you're at too low percent it's not going to do anything if you're at 12 percent it's not going to connect right so the window that he can actually kill you off that is relatively, and he needs a DI read too. It's relatively like hard to get that. Like this is, we're still talking about an honest character. I don't think a character requiring skill makes them honest. For example, it's Steve, not. Yeah, I, I feel like Steve requires a ton of skill, right? No. <laughs> Black placements, being able to understand where the grid is on. Um, this in ultimate in general, where you can place blocks, uh, when you can mine, kind of playing mind games around mining versus uh, using up till, for example, that, that requires like a degree of skill that doesn't make that character honest, so to speak. I, I don't think there no, really exists not. honesty in this game aside from extreme low tiers, i.e. Ganondorf. I, I truly think he's the only honest character in this game. No, I don't think Brawler is honest based on like, oh, he takes skill. I think Brawler is honest just because he can't like... How often do you feel robbed by Brawler, bro? Like, I feel like Brawler gets robbed way more often than he can rob you. The most larcenous thing he can do is, like, up here trains into Uppy, right? Other than that, what is what is he doing? He, if you get jumped in on or if you get ran on or you whipped or whatever on a me Brawler on a platform and then he does a throw and then he gets the read and you're in the right kill percent and then he does an Uppy, how are you going to say you got robbed? He earned that. That's honest, bro. Earned is a... Is, is a statement. Is a statement, but he earned it. <laughs> I will agree and disagree there. I, I I don't I don't believe in honesty in Smash Bros. I, I think that ideally, if you're piloting your character correctly, then there should be no honest character. Uh, this game I mean, has done a great job at making hitboxes extreme, frame data great, low some grabs incredible. I'm not gonna say every single one, but some of these grabs are a little bit extreme. And uh, that kind of goes, that kind of goes to what I was saying, where it's like Smash Ultimate's roster is not fun. It's either boring or stressful. But I don't have fun against like any of these characters. I yeah. even have fun watching most of them. You gotta enjoy the robbery. That's where the fun <laughs> comes in. Okay, when you're sitting here and you're playing a perfect neutral because you're able to sit behind an item and never have to interact with your opponent, but able to get like 70 percent off safe interactions. That has to be your definition of fun. So I, I <laughs> if you're looking for like <laughs> engaging neutral the entire time where you're constantly having to outthink your opponent, I mean, some characters can facilitate that, right? I think there's a whole niche of characters that kind of engage in that sort of gameplay. Uh, that'd be your Jokers, your Sheiks, your Roy, your Croms, uh, characters that really don't have a standard game plan for every matchup, but it really has to kind of figure out what their opponents are doing and react to it. I would say Wolf is in that category too. But some characters are That's meant fair. to play their own games as well. So, it, it, you know, it, there's... Oh, my contention for your neutral is that there is an option for everyone depending on what character you want to play. It's funny to me because, like, the list of characters you just listed out who are, like, reactive and neutral and have, like, a dynamic game plan also coincidentally happen to be some of the most like boring characters generally i think the most straightforward characters generally roy crom lucina uh who else did you just say like this like exception of like uh, joker even even joker eh, i'll give i'll give i'll give joker points but like all those other characters you just said i think i mean it's personal but i think they're kind of boring too i'm 
I don't think that's just a me thing. I mean, I, I am with you to a degree. I think that they're standard. I wouldn't call them boring, though. Uh, they're, they're still engaging, outplaying your opponent to a degree, right? I feel like they're characters in two camps for ultimate players. They're the characters that play their own game, and you can develop that game to be unwinnable for the other person. And then there are characters that play ultimate where you can constantly outplay a person because your character is better in so many attributes in the game's engine as opposed to playing like an entirely separate game. So it just depends on what side of the camp you're on. And I think those camps, when they do kind of converge into each other, I'll say like Brawl is more in that latter camp of like you're generally trying to find some type of opening on your opponent, some win in neutral where you can just exploit them for insane amount of time because you're a fast character. Relatively standard, don't really can't really force people to kind of come towards you in the same way as Steve or a Pac-Man can. But, you know, that's the game you sign up for. It is the game you sign up for. It's the I benefit. You would enjoy, I think you would stand to enjoy watching matches from other games just to kind of get a glimpse of it. I think you watched uh, some Strive. Like you mentioned that you used to watch some Strive in between matches on like uh, Smash tournaments. And if you were digging that, like matches in older games, even like newer games outside of Strive, I think are just so much more interesting. Uh, especially if you don't know what's happening. <laughs> so I think that you might benefit from just checking that out. I mean, I've watched like Street Fighter Six. I've watched um, older Tekken tournaments, particularly just because I want to see the dominance of Leroy, and I was intrigued about that. <laughs> uh, and course. I get it. I, I definitely get the appeal, right? Constant outplays are cool. But when I see those type of games, I just think like, wow, I am limited in this little box. You know, I'm, I'm stuck in this uh, 2D world. I can go backwards, forwards, jump in, jump out. That's pretty much it. I've, uh, I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of like thinking about this because I know we've had this discussion a lot of times, and it's something I've thought about. At first, I'm like, no, you're not limited. No, you're not. But if we're if we're thinking about it, like logically, rationally, and honestly, I feel like there is just enough limitation for me personally. This is how I'll say it. In Smash Brothers, I feel like there isn't enough limitation. You do something and you're not guaranteed a reward. If you, you could have the right answer, you could have the perfect timing. Uh, but, but in order to do a basic combo, like off your confirm, right? You'll need to read the eye. You'll need to, uh, go around your character's hurt box or whatever, hit box, hurt box, because they're all funny and they shift and the character will spin around as they're getting hit and that screws their hit box up funny, right? And then you'll have to hope that you don't get a phantom hit where you connected with them, but not really, right? And then after that, then you have to do it all over again because they're going to DI again. And, and then if a character doesn't have to do all that, if a character does have true combos that are not DI dependent, then it's just frustrating to fight against because you're like, well, look at the reward this guy gets and I got to work harder to do the same thing. But in other fighting games, I feel like there's just enough limitation. If you look at Guilty Gear, when you hit somebody, it's not as simple as like, oh, I hit him, now I get to do the combo. Because now there's a resource management. It's like, oh, are they going to burst? What's my burst safe route? Uh, some characters still have character specific combos. That's like, oh, this is more optimal here. Do I want the, do I want the, the Oki or do I want to get into the, the corner carry? Do am I going to break the wall? Am I going to go for a wall slump? Am I going to wait for this resource to come back? So there's still a lot of room for expression and decision making. And honestly, I think it makes for more interesting and interactive decisions than the whole like DI system and everything. So that's interesting that you say that you feel like that makes more room for expression as opposed to less. Because when I hear that, my initial thought is, hey, doesn't this make the system more finite? I.e., there are less interacts for you to analyze. Once you get used to certain situations, the answer is just automatic, right? There is no A, B, C option. There is a right answer. If you picked it, you're good to go. I, I guess I suppose it's in that same vein of chess, right? Where, you know, once you see certain scenarios unfold, it seems like there's no real answer, especially uh, for newer players who are trying to get into those scenes. What <laughs> fighting experience players is, it's a nightmare. Is it not frustrating to you to turn on like a, ma- a match in Smash? And then you practice this combo for so many hours and then you get online and you can't do it because 
there's a little bit of lag or it doesn't work on that character or they just DI'd funny, right? Is that not frustrating to you? Do you not just want to learn a combo and be able to do it? Personally, I, I don't find it frustrating. What I find is is added to my knowledge base, right? Like, okay, this didn't work on this character because of X. Oh, they hurt by shift here. Um, this only works on like 3% of the cast, but hey, when I fight that 3%, I'm ready for it. I, I find that to be more engaging, I suppose. I, but I can definitely see the rationale on the opposite end where, you know, you feel like you've really grinded out a certain combo or, um, you know how this interaction goes and you want to have that consistency. And it's a little bit more difficult in a game of this size or with this kind of engine. What I'll say is that I, I agree that like character specific combos will make it more interesting, right? Like a lot of older games are almost exclusively like Guilty Gear Exert. Like every character's BMBs are like character specific because there's different weight classes, different hurt boxes, different fall speeds, right? Hmm. So there's a ton of combos that's like, oh, this only works on this character, right? And while it does feel like there's a lot to learn and it feels like there's a lot of room to grow, um, I still feel like there's a point where you can feel like, oh, I did this, so I know my reward is going to be. As opposed to Smash, where it's like, oh, I did this, but he DI'd funny. Or, oh, I did this, but, oh, it was kind of like, it was like a later frame in the animation and then the hitbox ads were interacted funny. I feel like you're never guaranteed anything in Smash, and that to me is what's frustrating. I will ask you a question kind of based off that. What game do you feel would be more accessible to a beginner um, in fighting games in general? A Smash Bros. title or a traditional FGC and why? I think that... I think that it really depends on how much you're willing to push as a beginner at the beginning. Uh, obviously at the beginning, right? But I think that for Smash Brothers, it is easy to see, like, oh, I press up B, I go up, I press side B, I go to, like, left or right or whatever, right? But there are fighting games now that do that same thing, that don't have a platforming aspect to them. Uh, DNF Duel, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Those are games where you can do up B, where you can do side B, where you can do down B, right? You don't even have to do, like, motion inputs. You don't have to worry about DI. Um, I think that Smash is probably more intuitive, and that's why a lot of people stick to it. Because, like, if you're a total scrub and you don't know what's happening, but you know how to move around, then you can kind of fish around for a spike. But then if you're against somebody in, like, a traditional fighting game and they know what's happening, they're not going to give you the opportunity to do that. So I get why it could have this illusion that, like, Smash is, like, the easiest game to get into, but I really don't think it is anymore. Interesting. Uh, what kind of swayed your opinion on that? Just, um, yeah, just give me a bit more background there. I think that it's just easier. If Again, it depends on how hard you're willing to push at the beginning and then, like, what your goals are. If your goal is, like, oh, just understand the game, like, just play Smash enough to a level where you know what a ledge guard is, play Smash enough to a level where, like, oh, you can beat your buddies at, like, a party or something like that. Uh, Smash has a lot of unfair mechanics, and every character has one. So you could just learn one of those, and you can, you know, you can just mess people up at, like, a party, a house party or something, right? But if we're talking about, like, getting into it, especially if we're talking about, like, okay, I want to compete, like, good luck in Smash. There's 80-something characters. There's all this funny, like I said, there's no guaranteed reward for a lot of characters on a lot of confirms. Um, all these weird hitboxes you have to learn, all these knowledge checks you have to know just to interact with the character, and then sometimes genuinely just flat out bad matchups, right? Just lopsided matchups that just pop up. Traditional fighting games, I think, are generally more balanced than Smash, and which isn't even to diss Smash's balancing. It's just harder to balance a roster of 80 characters. Great. So other fighting games tend to be a bit more balanced in Smash. And like I said, the accessibility post Street Fighter V, accessibility for fighting games has just been like every game wants to be the easiest game. Like they're they're catering games to new players at this point more so than they are to like veteran players. I think it's a lot easier to to just get in and understand a fighting game and then get to like like let's say Diamond Platinum Master Street Fighter Six. I don't think that's unachievable for a beginner. Interesting. I, when when I think of 
a lot of these more um, established titles. Uh, I'm not saying that Smash isn't right. We've been around since like what 1990s or so. But uh, when I think of the more established titles in terms of the fighting game space, like your Street Fighters, uh, I believe Tekken Eight is the latest Tekken game out right now. Gears of Gear Strive, etc. I think legacy skill uh, really does play a big role in the current gap between like players um, who have played like older titles as opposed to like just picking up a game for the first time. Whereas Smash doesn't generally have this issue. And I hate oh. to use this example, <laughs> but Steve, number one player in the world right now, Akola. That man was not a Smash 4 player from my knowledge, right? I think he's like 14, 15, 16 year old right now. And there are like countless other players whose first Smash game is ultimate, but they're seeing competitive success. I don't think you'll see a mirrored story in any other title um, in the FGC. I mean, yeah, no. uh, as far as uh, legacy skill, I think that legacy skill is a huge thing in games like Tekken that tend to like retain uh, a lot of like uh, what make like important skills. Like Tekken between Tekken Seven and Tekken Eight is not that huge a difference right but if we're talking about like street fighter 5 to street fighter or street fighter 4 to street fighter 5 let's say a lot of the legacy skills from street fighter 4 did not carry over um a lot of vortex stuff has been removed um a lot of like uh like this the ways you would punish or counter hit confirms whatnot a lot of it has changed uh the buffer window has been largely increased in street fighter 5 Crush counters, they give you a giant, like, screen freeze, and it goes, it makes this glass shattering sound effect, so you can tell when you got a counter hit. Uh, I think that a lot of legacy skills are, in fact, I'll say most modern fighting games, legacy skill is not as important. I think legacy skill comes in the form of, like, labbing or, like, universal constants, like, with punishing and stuff like that. But that's for any fighting game, including Smash. So, I don't think that you can like hold that against modern fighters now. I think legacy skill is a bigger thing in Smash than it is in in traditional fighters. Whoa, okay. I I was with you until that last comment. I I don't see how you could possibly rationalize no. that. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh yeah, I think it maybe it's hard for you to see, but movement is actually a huge skill. And it's one that you never really master in Smash. Uh so I think that legacy skill is huge there. If you're if there's a, a beginner and like if I tell you, okay, do like a a fox trot into a dash dance, into a rar, into a ledge trump, into a fast fall, into a regrab, right? Do you you could just look at the list, and be like, okay, fast fall, regrab, dash, right? To a mm-hmm. beginner, they're not even gonna like each of those things is something that is going to take hours or, or days or weeks or months to like build a muscle memory for. Mm-hmm. And that's some stuff that you consistently get better at doing and you don't stop like improving at it. In Street Fighter Five, if I wanted someone to dash, they'll dash. If I wanted someone to walk, they'll walk. If I wanted someone to shimmy, they'll shimmy. Like I think it's more intuitive. So movement is something that you don't really consider because it's something that's so like muted in your Smash experience. But I think that it's something that makes it a lot harder to get into to Smash at, like a higher level than other fighting games. Okay, uh, I can see that. I, I truly, definitely do not have that in the back of my head when it comes to uh, movement, but. In a retrospect, I suppose if I did come up to you a complete beginner and say, like, all right, yeah, fast forward, then go ahead and do a ledge from back here. That doesn't really compute. In the same way that if you were to tell a beginner, okay, make sure you use your meaty aerial or an okey, I feel like the terminology is really the issue there as opposed to the actual actions. I think the mechanics of it are still fairly simple. I.e., like fast fall, okay, make sure you hold down after you're at the top of your jump. That, that's not insanely difficult to grasp so i I don't think that's more a terminology issue than it is a um uh, a mechanical issue i don't know about that i don't know about that because just being able to like just even simple things like uh, like up be out of shield or like parry footstool these are things that like if you're not practicing them you're going to screw up the timing or you're going to screw up like this. And the, like, these are things that you actually like need to be like, you need to be practicing to be consistent at. Agreed. I mean, this is labbing in general, of course, uh, being able to like do attack castles and street fighter six would require like some sort of like consistency 
um, or like some investment of time to do so. So in, in that sense, I agree. It's not necessarily like, okay, I'm going to get this on the first day, but these aren't also things that you necessarily have to do to be able to be competitive either. My hot take about Street Fighter and similar fighting games is that the only reason that it's hard for newcomers to cancel is because it's just like, it's like learning a new language, I think. Uh, at the beginning, when you don't know any vocabulary and you don't know any grammar, it's going to be tough to like convert your thoughts into words. But once you get past that initial point, like if you practice for one day, two days, you're going to know how to like cancel. You're going to know how to chain. You're going to know how to EX cancel. You're going to know how to like cancel specials into supers. It doesn't even take that long. You just need to not quit. That's how I feel. Um, truthfully, but I think we can use that to kind of like summarize the entire experience as like a newcomer coming into like a fighting game. Um, just that dedication to not quit, putting some time in and finding some way to a make that time enjoyable for you. Um, whether that's being engaged in the combos you're learning or um, just really enjoying the process of seeing yourself improve against other players that that's really like the core of improving in pretty much anything, right? Just finding some way to make it enjoyable and being able to put in that investment, have that discipline to really move forward. Now we, I can tell I was going to go say, on, go on, go on. we are on like 45 <laughs> minutes here. Oh, yeah. So we may I was just to wrap up. I was just about to say, bro, I don't know. I feel like you've been, you've been listening to a lot of Drake recently. I got consensus on you. <laughs> Wait, what? I feel like, I feel like you're really, really trying to keep it PG, bro. Like, I feel like we're not getting the real C. Caleb right now, bro. Let it out. Oh, yeah. You're, yeah, yeah I see. Me. You're, you're a Kendrick fan. <laughs> bro, you're still doing it. Talk the way you want to talk I'm to me. Bro. Talk, talk the way you talk without the mic. Just say it. Thanks. Say, release the hate, bro. I know, I know you're holding it up. Release I have hate. no hatred towards you, buddy. <laughs> uh, I, I listen, bro. All I'm saying, like, when Drake said Kendrick just opened the mouth, Someone go hand them a Grammy right now. That's that's you. That's you in fighting that's games. You. Like you're just like, oh <laughs> wow, Street Fighter Six dropped, game of the year, Guilty Gear Strive. I bro. love it, bro. I'm not gonna say. Look, look, I'm guilty too. I hate too. I hate Smash, bro. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, I'm a Street Fighter Six fan, bro. Because end of the day, I don't even Street Fighter Six. Akuma's dropping. I don't even know what day he's coming out, bro. Like, it, I'm not a Six Fighter. I'm not a Street Fighter Six fan. I'm a Smash hater. And you should know this. Okay. Like, that, it, that's that's it, them, man. You, you, they're no lies there. They're no lies there. I can't even lie. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm, I am glad, though. I'm so glad that we moved away from terrible games like Guilty Gear XRD wow, that are needlessly bro. complicated <laughs> and ridiculously, ridiculously freaking dense in terms of technicality. Like, how do you have a tutorial that doesn't make sense for somebody who played a game the for like three, four years? The tutorial's the dumb. The tutorial the was sick. Is trash. I'm Are sorry you to kidding tell me? You. That's the best tutorial That's I've a, seen in a fight. I literally cannot yeah, get past the tutorial. tutorial, bro. I'm sorry to tell you that that game is trash. Right did you get stuck on super jumping or something? What's wrong with you? I got no did comment. You get stuck on I'm the not, I got no comment. Oh, you did, didn't you? Uh, oh. You know, it's a great place to end because, <laughs> you know, we're on 47 minutes. It's time to nah, go. Bro. Time to go. We're nah, coming bro. through. Um, nah, we got to find a name for the yeah. podcast. Or it looks like we're going to have to come through next time. Thank you so All much. Right. You have any outro? <laughs> uh, yeah. Tune in next time. Because I think we finally woke up the real Caleb. I think he was sleepy for this whole podcast. I think I woke him up right at the very end. So tune in next time, bro. We're going to have the real C. Caleb on this channel. We're going to get a feature from the real C. Caleb. Oh, man. Bro. He's going to be changing his name. Uh, tune in, guys. It's going to be great. We're going we're gonna to do some more hating. You know, we know I'm all about the hate. You know I love the hate. I know you love the hate. Tune in next time, bro. About to say, appreciate you coming through Soul Shock on YouTube. We're going to make sure we link you here. Then should be good to go. Till next time, Soul All Shock right. King. Peace. Peace, please. Wow, 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 wow. I'm going to do my stuff. Why you trolling like a bitch? Ain't you tired? Trying to strike a chord, and it's probably a minor. <laughs>